Hello, um, long time no see. I just wanted to do a very quick video. Um, I'm recording this the day after the the X Summit in February, and um, this has got nothing to do with the X106 uh, or anything like that. Something that just caught my attention was this uh, Kaizen firmware update that they're planning on doing, um, especially for the XH2S. And in particular, I noticed that they're looking like they're going to try and improve the electronic electronic shutter autofocus. Now this was of particular interest to me because I had been planning on doing a video about Fuji's autofocus for quite some time. And I thought this is quite a timely time to do it. So we would talk about um, how I get critical focus and what my experience has been like with Fujifilm autofocus, especially on their flagship camera like the X-H2S. And I mean, it's not going to be a video for somebody who's like, I haven't done Sony or Canon or anything else or Nikon. I can't compare with any other brands. But I hope that when you, you see this, what kind of how I approach the shoot and what I need to do to come away with keepers, it might give you a broader idea of where Fuji is with their autofocus and help you make an informed decision as to whether this is not good enough or good enough. Now, last year saw me do a, a lot of um, orchestra work. So I was shooting um, rehearsals and I needed to be absolutely you know, pin, pin quiet. I couldn't make a single noise as I was, uh, me moving and shuffling around on the floor was enough volume. Okay, so I needed to be very quiet on those shoots. So I had to use electronic shutter mode, which is why the Fujifilm X-H2S was so good because its stack sensor allowed me to use the electronic shutter mode and go at, at shutter speeds higher than 1 50th, 1 60th or 1 100th of a second, allowed me to get a little bit higher to 250, 320, whatever I wanted to, under strong ambient um, light, under artificial light, under strong artificial light, and not get any kind of banding problems that you would get in normal traditional cameras. So I pretty much live in electronic shutter mode and I don't make a single noise and I just thought this was really interesting so it, it seemed like Fuji were basically admitting that perhaps the mechanical shutter is better for autofocus than the electronic shutter um, so let's just see where they go with that it'll be interesting but right now I thought I would show you some of my work we're going to dive into Lightroom I'm going to show you some of my uh, brief moments of times moments that I've captured how many frames I need to capture and you're going to go 100% zoom and just show you what's going on with the autofocus um, for things like face and eye detection which is pretty much what I live in a previous video I did I talked about the X-T4 and how its face and eye detection was unreliable it just seemed to find faces where there weren't really faces or just give up there were face right there it was in focus on the plane of focus and it just still would not present a box around the face or the eye so I would need to toggle out of that quite a lot and then just you know use a wide tracking box or something like that I'm glad to report that has not been my experience at all with the X-H2S I live in AFC and I live in face and eye detection I have my camera set up so that you know a push of a button will, will toggle the eye that I want and things like that so it's fairly fairly ad advanced working camera in that in that context but still it's not infallible and there are problems so I just want to talk about that and show you um, just quickly my results so let's let's do that now all right so we're in Lightroom and I've just kind of condensed this to instead of, instead of going through the entire shoot I've just picked a couple of moments here to illustrate my point now you notice first of all um, when I do a shoot you, the, I'm basically capturing moments of time and I'm looking within that moment of time the best moment to capture. So if we if we look, you'll see that as we scroll down, it it looks like a thumbnail level. It, you know, ignore the purple and things like that and star ratings, but you'll you'll see that it looks like the same moment of time basically caught. You know, if I take this shot to here, and then we just have a look at that as a thumbnail, it all looks like the same moment of time. Okay, and this is actually how I work. Okay, because I know that sometimes things change, things can line up together and make an, a, a better shot, basically. Um, but also, I'm doing it from an auto focus perspective as well. I, again, just having a look at this one here. This is a good example of when I've, set, I've started to see a moment. I like this angle, and as I'm taking the shots, this guy's kind of looking down at, at, at his worksheet. But eventually, he starts to look towards the camera, and there we go. We get a nice shot here. I've even done some monochrome versions of it, where he's got a little bit of a catch light in the eye as well. I don't know if we'll see that here. And you can sort of see that things look look pretty good, pretty pretty okay. Okay, so that's just that's just you know, well, do, you know, it, it, when you do this kind of approach, you do take a lot of images, all right, in a shoot. But fear not, I mean, there are ways to handle workflow workflow to condense that and make you just basically start looking at moments of time and just deciding whether it's worth looking at, at from a thumbnail perspective. At that, there's I could do a whole video about workflow. If you don't know, Lightroom has a feature where you can kind of um, 
you can stack images by time, time stamp. So instead of going through, you know, 10,000 images on your first level of cull, you might just be looking at 2,000 moments of time or whatever you're doing. So there are ways to condense things and make it a little bit easier. Anyway, that's not really what we're here for today. I just wanted to kind of sort of briefly show you what basically is going on um, with uh, Fuji X-H2S. Okay, so sense-wise, I said before, in X-H2S, we're, we're pretty much doing... Um, the we are we're working in AFC face eye detection. Okay, um, what's this camera? This camera we're working with the XH2S, and we have the Sigma eighteen to thirty five. So that's not a native lens. Okay, that's another thing. Lenses absolutely do make a difference to this process. But even with linear motors, this issue that we'll find in a minute. It still, it still exists. It doesn't really matter. It just makes this a little bit less. But um, let's just have a look. So face eye detection on this chap. And you can see the very first shot. I don't know how this is going to come out on, on YouTube. But it, it's not great. I mean, it, we're kind of in the ballpark for focus. But it, it's probably down here more in the shaft towards his finger than it is actually on his eyes. Okay. So if we just move along here. This one, again, similar. Not not great. Um, keep, this one's really quite out of focus. And we can actually see that this shaft down here is more. Now, you could, at this point in time, put this down more towards the you know the, the lens, perhaps a Fringer 3 adapter and the Sigma 1835. But I'll be honest, it, you do get wobbling AF with um, with the linear motors. I've, I've got the XF90, the XF5140. I can still experience this. As we keep going, as we keep bursting, that one's got even worse out of focus even worse still, but it kind of warps back in and finds its target. And that that one here is a fairly acceptable level of sharpness here. So that's maybe one I would use. I wouldn't use this one. And then we're going, we're moving out again. And so you can see why spamming is quite important with using a Fuji, Fuji camera. We're onto another shot now where one of his eyes is obscured. Again, still, this is blurry, blurry, bit better, blurrier. Okay, and that one's pretty good. You're gonna to start to see the eyelashes there. So this one is probably the best keeper of that moment in time, you know? I mean, we I'm 100% zooming here. I mean, to be honest, my client would be quite happy with any of these ones that were slightly softer out of focus. But when I'm going through it, this is why I tend to take quite a lot of shots, okay? Let's have a look at some other ones. Um, let's have a look at this one here. We'll just uh, grab these. And zoom in a little bit. So the first shot here, it's kind of in focus. It's all right. It's not too bad. Obviously, his expression is bad. But, you know, we're just judging focus here. That one's not too bad. We can see the eyelashes. Eyes, not too bad. This one's all right as well. This one's not quite as good. This has started being a bit blurry. This one is better. And then, yeah, this one's pretty good now. So we can really start to see those eyelashes and, and details there in the eye. And obviously, sometimes it also becomes an issue to do with um, motion and then moving and things like that. So we can't judge it all. But yeah, this was the XF56 1.2 RWR. This is an interesting lens because it's not linear. You actually really feel it wobbling. When, when the AF gets the eye, you can feel the whole motor just pulsing a little bit. It, I, I believe it does this kind of micro pulsing with the linear motor lenses, but because they're silent and quiet, or the stepping motors, little like 50 F2, for example, because they're quiet, you don't feel it and hear it as much. But I think it, it's just it just happens with Fuji Fuji lenses. Um, so you can see there, you know, that's a nice shot there. That one's sharp, and this one's you know blur. Some of these are obviously motion blur rather than anything else. But I mean, the 56 1.2, that's a sharp, sharp lens, you know. So something like this would be would be absolutely fine. And obviously, you know, when I'm bursting, I'm looking at shots where maybe, you know, I don't want the person in the background. So that one, you know, it's a shame that one's a bit blurry because, you know, she's gone, whatever. But yeah, that's just another example there. Um, let's go and have a look at maybe one more and we'll call it a day. Um, let's have a look at this one here. So... Here we are, we are with the 56 1.2 again by the looks of it. And yeah, this is again face and eye detection. So we're really nowhere near focus here. It's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty blurry, but he's kind of dark. It's kind of harder to see that, you know, where it's contrast is not strong. You know, if there's no catch light in the eye, it struggles a little bit, I believe. So that's pretty blurry, 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 blurry still. <clears throat> this one's getting better. That one's not too bad. So that one's blurry. This will start, it's a bit more bright as well. We can start to see things. Um, and you just keep going through and you find ones that are a little bit better. That one's not too bad. There's a little bit more detail going on in the eye there. That one's better still. 
And I think this is maybe the one I ended up using the most. That that's acceptable sharpness there. Yeah, and that's an edited version of it where you can just I've boosted things a little bit, you know. So from sort of there, yeah, you can say I might be just done a monochrome version of it as well. So yeah, I mean, so I'm looking at moments of time as they're playing the instrument, and yeah, just try to get an idea. And again, this is the XH2S. So I'm at one three twenty. If I was using a, a normal stack sensor camera, they'd be banding and going across this most likely. Um, I did use the XS20 as well for quite a few of my shoots and the XT32 in the past. And yeah, I would get banding anything above 1 100th really. And look, so that's really it. I wanted to make a very quick video. I just wanted to basically just illustrate through what I do for work, what is a necessity. It just so happens, I don't mind it too much because I am looking to capture moments. So when I see a moment I like or find a composition, I do I do almost treat the, the shutter like a record button. I'm 10 frames a second and I'm just starting to record this moment in time. And things usually do get a little bit better like that that one we saw before where the, where the man starts to, you know, lift his, um, starts to start his his gaze um and moves towards the the conductor um you know that's kind of the stuff i'm personally looking for with my shoot so i don't mind it so much that you know this sort of thing is how i operate and it just so happens that usually yeah you'll get a nice you'll get a sharp shot but along the way you'll go soft soft bang now i've got one that's perfectly in sharp and that's the one that, that's my keeper rate and that's i i think that i just wanted to just kind of, kind of qualify that because a lot of people will see my work, I'll maybe just upload 10 different images and they think I'm just really, really good with my timing and I'm, I'm not that deliberate. I see a moment, I get my compositions I like, but I am absolutely spraying there because I know that the Fuji system can be a bit wobbly for AF um, and I'm almost look, and also looking for a good moment in time caught where it's at its absolute peak. And so, yeah, those two things align. I don't mind the Fuji autofocus so much. But yeah, I hope I hope this video helps. It's just a very quick one, like I said. Be interested to see what they do with the Kaizen firmware. See if it is better um, in a few months' time when they, whenever they release it. And maybe do an update on this video. Um, because like I say, I, I live in electronic shutter mode. But yeah, very interesting to hear that they, they seem to think mechanical is maybe even better. Anyway, I'll leave it there, I'm rambling. Um, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.